I'm Anna. And I'm Fran. And you're listening to Murder Words. Okay, I am so excited to tell you the story. Um, first off, I have pneumonia, so I sound still like this. Sick I'm still sick. I'm still sick, and I sound a little crazy, but I'm anxious to get recording again. So we're doing this right now. I tried to get her to tell me who it was. We like to surprise each other. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for us to show up with like the, the same, same case, case one day, right? <laughs> she won't tell me, so this is a surprise for me too. I know it's better than you don't know. Okay, so. We're going to discuss the case of Sharon Marshall. Okay. I don't know why I expected you to do like a dun, dun, dun. (laughs) Okay. I was like, I need a reaction. All right. So in 1986, in Forest Park, Virginia, Sharon Marshall was a teenager and seemed to be working towards a goal of having a really great life. Um, She did extremely well in school. Um, she actually ended up getting a full ride scholarship to Georgia Tech. Um, like, so she was really smart. She's really bright, and she was absolutely gorgeous at the same time. Like, she just it just appeared she was going to have this really bright future. So she was known for being very intelligent um, and also extremely kind. Um, she easily made friends. Everyone loved her. Just an all American girl from the outside, at least. She was very ambitious as well. Her goal was to be a um, space engineer and work for NASA. No. I know. I can't. I know. She basically wanted to be an astronaut. Like, how crazy. Do you remember last year when, did you watch the the rocket? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was in panic. You mean that? The entire time. You mean the amazing event where a private company launched their own rocket? Huge event. Yes. I know. And I actually watched it. Mm-hmm. I don't really, I don't really watch that kind of, anyway, I was. News? You don't watch news? I really don't watch the news that much. Like, if it's not like Netflix mm-hmm. or, or, you know, I mean, I see what's on the internet, but I watched that mm-hmm. and I was in panic the whole time. I know. I watched it too. I was um, like, you can't pay me. I'm sorry. You cannot pay me. I know, they just became a spec. They literally go. just record the whole thing and then just become a spec and gone. I have to be medicated to fly on an airplane. You do. You would not do well <laughs> I space. I was. Almost had to be medicated to watch them take off in a spaceship. Like, that's how bad it was. So, Straight panic. So, basically, Sharon's a beast. She's, you know, great in school, intelligent, nice, wants to work for NASA. Unfortunately, this will not happen because in her final few months of high school, she found out she was pregnant. Oh. Yes. Um, she gave birth to a daughter um, and gave it up for adoption. Um, the guy she was dating at the time, she never told the boy that she was pregnant. And they were still seeing each other. Like, she hid it really well. He didn't know? He didn't know. He had no idea that she was pregnant. I don't know what wow. stories you came up with to tell him, like, when she did, like during those last few months when you obviously can tell. But she, she never told him. And so she gave birth to the baby, and uh, a couple from Texas adopted the baby. Aww. Yeah. And um, then they just continued dating. Like, nothing happened. Wow. I know. <laughs> Why wouldn't she tell? Oh, she was she, afraid he would want to keep it. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. She just didn't do that. Um, after she returned and they were dating for a while, um, they actually attempted to run away together. Um, but she was forced to come back um, to her home. because She was under 18 still. Oh. Um, so after she turned 18, she decided that she was going to move to Tampa, Florida just for like a new start, she's going to try to start out again and get back into what she loved to do. Um, she ended up packing up and moving with a man named Frank Floyd. Uh, while she was there, she began to date another guy, unfortunately, um, and became pregnant again. At the same time? Yeah, she was dating another guy. Oh, okay. She dated, her and Frank moved to Tampa, and then uh, she started seeing this other guy and got pregnant by him. Um, she ended up keeping this baby and... Um, and Frank Floyd um, raised it as his own. Oh, okay. So she cheated on him, and then he was like, "I'm gonna still help you." Yeah. So was, oh. I mean, kind of. You'll that see. T- oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Frank and Sharon had a really weird relationship. Um, 
she never really said that Frank was like her boyfriend. But, um, you know, so people were really confused about what that relationship exactly was because they lived together and they mutually raised her son, whose name was Gregory Marshall. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Frank right now, about some of his back history, okay? Is so, he older? In my mind, Frank seems like an older name. He was. Okay. He was a few, quite a few years older <laughs> than, than Sharon because he was born in 1943. And his story's happening, starting out in 1989. So. Okay. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he's he, older. Yeah, he older. Um, yeah, he older. <laughs> he older. <laughs> he older. <laughs> or 1986 when it's starting. But yeah, he's a little old. Um, his, so Frank's father ended up dying when he was one um, from kidney and liver failure. Um, so he was an alcoholic. Um, his mother... Um, then was forced to give up him and his other siblings to the state because she couldn't um, financially support them. So Frank ended up being moved um, into a care home from the Georgia Baptist Children's Home. Um, he would spend the next 14 years of his life there, and wow. he claimed um, that he was really bullied there um, for being too feminine and reported acts of sexual abuse the facility mm. they said they would do harsh punishments to him um for example he once got in trouble for they caught him masturbating and so they put his hand in boiling water so he wouldn't do it what? again yeah so they were really mean to him like they were rough i don't understand why people do that and get off to that or something like hurting kids but that was like his punishment oh my gosh and that's oh just what gosh. we that's just what he admitted to you know what i mean um he also said that he was sexually assaulted with a broomstick. Like these, like it wasn't Dude. a good, wasn't a good place to be raised. So in 1956, he was kicked out of there. I think, oh, he, I think that's blessing. blessing. Like yeah. he left, and um, he was kicked out because he um, was doing small time burglaries. Um, he broke into a couple's home um, where he was trying to find food. He only took food. Yeah. Dude, that is so sad. I know. Well, just just keep hold your sadness real quick. Okay. Okay. Don't be but sad for him. Just don't don't hold, just hold your sadness. Okay. okay? <laughs> um. So he gets discharged and he's put into the care of his sister named Dorothy. It didn't work out with Dorothy. He started getting into a little bit of trouble and she kicked him out. Um. So Floyd then tried to Frank Floyd. I call them both names. Tried to locate his real mother. And he ended up finding her. She was working in Chicago as a prostitute. Mm. And um, obviously she could not financially support him or take care of him emotionally. Um, and Frank at this time was um, still under age. Like he's still a teenager. Yeah. And um, his, his mother then helped him forge documentation um, so that he could enlist into the army. Like... Saying that she gave him permission, or like, no, like forged, mean, like, like forged... forged documentation, so that he could join the army to be, so we'd be taken care of. But about six months into his service, um, the army found out that his paperwork was false, and they discharged him. What, like is that like a fake age, or to like yeah, like oh. it was like a fake age, yeah. Okay. Fake records. That's sad. Yes. They didn't help him? No, they did not. They kicked him out. Oh, I'm still holding my... I'm trying to hold my sadness. even with six months, like, he still was underage at that point. Yeah. But you would think that they'd take care of him, be like, That's hey... That's what I'm saying. Like, you can come on back. Somewhere. Yeah, like, you can come on back whenever you turn 18, like... Go to this home that's not gonna boil your hands. Yeah, like, something like that. Just for the next year and a half. And then I'll get a good soldier out of you. Yeah. Something. After this... He became a drifter. You know what I mean? What else is yeah. he supposed to do? He has no family, no skills, because he was in that awful place for 14 years. Yeah. He becomes a drifter. So for the next year, he just kind of went around everywhere. So when Floyd was, and he just turned 17, he ended up getting into a shootout with police. That escalated it really very quickly. quickly. Yes, very quickly. Um, he tried to steal, um, or he stole a gun from Sears. He broke into Sears, stole a gun. Um, the cops were called, and they had a shootout, and he was shot in the gut. Okay. 
Okay. He was then sent to an institution to spend out the rest of his juvenile years, which is about like a year and a half at that point. Um, and then he was released. Like, I'm telling you, like, he's only 18. He just turned 18 at this point. And so he was in all of these facilities and no one helped him. No one ever helped him. Hold your sadness. I'm hold okay. I'm holding <laughs> sadness. Yes. In 1962, Floyd found a job at a local airport. Um, he was only there for about a month when he kidnapped a four-year-old girl from a bowling alley. Do what? Yes. Why? This escalates quickly. He abducted a four-year-old girl from a bowling alley and sexually, sexually assaulted her in the woods. He was then sentenced to 10 to 20 years in prison for this crime. God. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Hold your tears. Like, hold your sympathy real quick. So he was quickly then moved um, to a um, mental institution, um, and this is just a few months later after he's being sentenced. Um, he escaped. They were doing a transport with him, and he escaped. Oh my gosh! Um, after he escaped, he immediately robbed a bank for six thousand dollars. I am so like what? <laughs> oh, the justice system failed to protect the citizens. It gets crazier. Like, I'm just really, like, so he's sexually assaulting children. Yes. Robbing banks. Mm hmm ro Like. Yeah. He has no. He's not even 20 at this yeah, point. Uh, okay. Like, this is all happening. Like, he's still he's 18, 19. Everything. He's just dipping his toes in everything. every crime to yes. see what he likes the best. He was then moved to, he was then sent to a federal reformatory because he robbed the bank. It became a federal crime. Um, where he, when he was there, he attempted to escape again, but was unsuccessful. So they ended up transferring him to a maximum prison. Okay. Good. You know what I mean? Good. The inmates were not kind to Floyd. No, I would assume they were not. not. They were not. Um, they were very, very mean and cruel to him. And after threatening suicide, Frank threatened suicide, he climbed up on top of the jail and threatened to jump off. Um, they moved him to another prison. And they were nice to him. I mean, I don't he's know. a child molester. That maybe so. they just didn't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. You, <laughs> people find out, though. Yeah. So I'm not sure what happened with that, but he got transferred to a less max facility. Um, in 1972, so 10 years after he was sentenced, um, in, you know, gets multiple escape attempts, one successful, and new charges for the bank. He's released 10 years later. How? He is. And you're going to see a pattern with this, okay? You're going to see a pattern. Wow. This is Virginia? This is Georgia. Georgia. Okay. So, he was released to a halfway house 10 years later. Um, he was only there for um, a couple months. So, he was released to his halfway house. And he completed there with no, you know, offenses or anything. Um, he was released into general population. Um, not general populations. Being a civ like, civilian. <laughs> he, was, he became a civilian. He was in the real world now. Um, he was released two months when he committed his next crime that we know of. He attempted to kidnap a woman at a gas station. Um, he put her in her own vehicle and attempted to sexually assault her. Um, but the woman escaped. Good. Yeah, I know. I was like, good for her. God. Thank God, yes. Um, Floyd again was arrested for this crime. But he was allowed to post bail. Why? He How? was allowed to Who post bail? bail. Who did this? So his friend um, that he met in prison, I think his name was, last name was Dial, he let him, he, he went and posted his bond for him. Like he was then out, like Dial was out, and he went and posted Frank's bond for him. And they just let him do it. I am so confused with his pattern. Like, he has no, this is what I like to do. Yeah. I feel it, like that's not normal. Like, as soon, I mean, like, he needs locked away. Away. Because yeah, as soon as he, like, there's no period of, you know, just good. It's just immediately yeah. commits another violent crime. So we're going to go back now. Um, he was, you know, of course, obviously he never showed up for his court date. 
So he's a right. fugitive right. at that yeah. point. You know what I mean? I don't. I, no one should have thought that he would. No. You know what I mean? should have known that was going to happen immediately. It, as you see, there are multiple. Police escort <laughs> should have been there. To right. Take him. So as you see, like, this could have, the next of the story could have been befriended if they would have just taken care of him in the beginning. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? As soon as he sexually assaulted someone, he got off on the minimum of 10 years with added new charges. So, I mean, it was just like, it, it doesn't make this sense. This could have been prevented. Yes. It could have been. I mean, I know people that have had drug charges and they get longer sentences. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and that's crazy. So I guess we're, now we can go back to Sharon and Frank because he's on the run for a few years after that. And we'll get back to what he was doing in a few minutes. Okay. Um, so they're in this weird relationship. Um, you know, Frank's still financially supporting Sharon's son. Um, and he knows it's not his baby. Um, so... Frank attempted to work um, to help support the child. Um, he was a painter, but he claims that he couldn't work very often because he had a bad back. Which I wrote in my notes, that's ridiculous. Go find another <laughs> job. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I was wondering when you said attempted to work. Yeah, he attempted <laughs> to be a painter, but he had a bad His back. back man. man, he had a bad back. It hurt. It was sore. You know, and I guess he couldn't sit in a desk either. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he sure had enough energy and back strength to commit all these crimes. <laughs> kidnap women. Kidnap women and, and everything else. And... He probably blamed his bad back on why he wasn't successful in his last attempt. <laughs> all right. So Sharon became, you know, the main financial supporter. Um, and Sharon became an exotic dancer. And she also signed up for, like, welfare services, like state services. Right. To financially support her, her, her son, and Frank. Um, so she was working at this club. Um, she was still really known for being like kind and friendly. Um, she made like friends really quickly and, um, she became friends with a, a woman named Cheryl Camesso. Cheryl. Cheryl. Cheryl? I'm going to say Cheryl. Cheryl. I am always going to say Cheryl. This is your accent. <laughs> this is your West Virginia accent. I am literally. All right, Cheryl. Cheryl. She's going to be called <laughs> Cheryl this entire time. I just want you guys to know that. Okay. <laughs> Don't, don't try to change me, Anna. <laughs> All right. Frank and Cheryl did not get along. Um, there were some rumors that Frank and Cheryl were, like, hooking up a little bit, um, but they were never really proven. Um, everyone just knew that they just did not get along. Their personalities clashed really bad. Um, and Sharon and Cheryl were really good friends. So, you know, he had to deal with her, basically. Yeah. Um, so in eight, or 1989... Um, the three of them went on a boat trip together. Uh, Frank, Cheryl, and Sharon all got into this big, huge fight on the boat. Um, like witnesses reported, it was just a massive fight that happened. So after the fight, Cheryl reported Sharon's income to social services. Like, wow. like, like petty, right? Yeah. Like super petty. Yeah. Um, and she ended up losing like her welfare support because of it. Um, she claimed she was, um, they told her that she made more money as an exotic dancer than she reported. Right. Which I get. You know what I mean? That's, I get it. But she totally just... Threw her straight under the bus. She did. She threw her straight under the bus. So, obviously, this didn't sit well with Frank. So, he went to the club Cheryl worked at. Um, they got into a huge argument there. Like, it was very public, right outside the club. Um, and Frank punched Cheryl in the face. Stop. Yes. How did his bad back allow that? I don't know. I was bad back. I feel like that should have been reported. I feel like if I punched someone in the face, I would be sore. Yeah, he can (laughs) definitely sit at a desk then. Yeah, how was that not reported? Yeah, well, shortly after the altercation, um, Cheryl told everyone that she was getting ready to go on a trip and leave state. She was going to go stay with a friend for just a couple days, get away from, like, all the drama and everything that was happening. Um, probably because she had a back, a black eye and didn't want to dance right. with a black eye. I wouldn't either. You know what I mean? Um, but after her, Cheryl's dad didn't hear from her that she had got their safety, like safely, he reported her as a missing person. Right. You know what I mean? Dads know. Parents know. You know I what I mean? Dads. I do too. Uh, police, so police started to investigate this. They took it serious, and they. That ended, is shocking. I know. I feel like they never they do. Never, they took this one serious. Um, there's actually a lot, like, the justice system really sucked in this, but the police force were awesome. 
They did a really good job. They tried. So Cheryl's car was found abandoned at a local airport. Um, and then they started a massive white search for her. Um, obviously, Sharon and Frank were considered suspects. Yeah. Because everyone had just witnessed this huge fight that they had. Um, but basically, the police had no evidence. Right. I mean, nothing, nothing to go off of. Um, and it came even more suspicious because Sharon and Frank moved very quickly after this. Wow. Red it, flag. Red flag. And they started using different names. So that makes me think they did it immediately. Well, a few months later, they got married as well. Probably, and I was thinking probably so that they couldn't tell on each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They got married. Um, they claimed that they got married because uh, Frank wanted um, Sharon's son to have his last name. They never changed it, though. Like, it actually never happened, and they started going off different names anyways after that. This is a true love story. It, it is. So through their moves, they landed in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, Sharon started dancing again there. Um, you know, trying to support her and her son and Frank. Um, and then Sharon became friends with another girl, one of her co-workers. And um, Frank and her did not get along either. Um, they ended up having a, a verbal argument in front of the club one night. Um, and the friend told Sharon that she should leave Frank. Be like, he's yeah. no good. Like, why are you putting up with this crap? Because everyone loved Sharon, but... No one liked Frank. Right. You know what I mean? They didn't understand the relationship because Sharon was so great and Frank was just terrible. Like, he's awful. So they could not understand why they were together. Why were they together? Well, he responded by quote, if she ever left me, I would kill the bitch. Interesting. Yeah, so didn't... He sounds like a true Jim. He's a true, <laughs> true bad one. Yeah. Secretly, Shannon had been planning on leaving him. Um, she had met a man at work, and she was forming a relationship with him and had planned on leaving Frank for this man. Frank found out. Oh my gosh, I'm getting nervous. Yeah, there. Frank found out about these plans, and he was obviously not happy. So, um, a few weeks later, um, him and Sharon are still like together, but he knows like what's up for this part. He knows. Uh, like, he knows, yeah, at this point. Like, he knows that she's getting ready to leave him. He's hearing rumors and stuff okay. about it. Um, so, a few weeks later, um, they find Sharon's body on the side of a road. What? Yes. They find Sharon's body on the side of the road. Um, she was still alive, but in bad shape. Um, she was taken to the hospital, and they assumed it was a hit and run because it was on, like, a major road. At this time, Frank... And her son were actually staying at a hotel, like, right up the street from that. They were living in and out of hotels at this point. And so Frank was up the road. He claimed he was sleeping during this time. Um, but he isn't notified about um, Sharon being in the hospital. And he goes to the hospital to see her. Um, when he gets there, um, all of Sharon's friends are there. Um, all the girls from the club. They're all seeing her, like, trying, yeah. trying to support her. Um, and so she ends up being in the hospital for, like, three or four days. And um, the friends are still visiting her. Everything, she's getting better. Doctors are really hopeful that she's going to get better and she's going to successfully recover from this accident. Um, out of the blue, Frank, no. out of the blue, Frank stops all visitation from anyone but himself. She's not allowed to have any visitors anymore. Randomly. Never gives a reason why. Oh. So, um, this was on the fourth day of her hospital stay. On the fifth day of her hospital stay, she randomly died. Stop. She did. She died. I just knew you were going to say that. Yep. Um, doctors were confused about it. Her friends were very confused about it because um, she was getting better. And uh, the doctor even labeled her death as a homicide. Oh, wow. Yeah, they, they really thought something happened. Did the doctor think it was Frank? Well, he, he couldn't say that. But he claimed the head injury um, that she received from the hit and run was not caused by a vehicle. Interesting. Yeah. But, of course, police had no evidence. They could not yeah. really prove this in court. That's happened. Um, he was, but he was pursued as a suspect for it. Um, and it got even more suspicious when Frank didn't even pay for a headstone for Sharon 
Why would he not do that? He just didn't, and her friends had to gather money together to pay for it. Dude. Mm-hmm. So, at this time, um, a few months before her death, Frank had taken a life insurance policy out on Sharon. Of course Sharon. he did. Yes. He gets real dumb right here, okay? Yeah. Um, the life insurance policy was for $80,000. Um, shortly after her death, like a week, he um, attempts to um, claim this insurance policy. But he's used so many alias over the last few years, so many social security numbers over the past few years, that they can't locate him in the system. Because they're all fake. Wow. So, Frank, pursued by money, you know what I mean? He gives them his real name and social security number, which immediately pops up for warrants for his arrest. Like, dumb, right? Why does he have warrants? From... He never showed up to court. Oh, he never. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. He that's... never showed up to court, and he has this long criminal history. They look at those kind of things. I knew. I forgot he didn't show up to court. And had to... Yeah. Okay. He didn't show up to court, wow. so he had warrants. What a mm -hmm. dumb idiot. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Frank messed up. Yeah. <laughs> he messed He got away with all this stuff, and he messed up because he wanted to claim that insurance yeah. money. Um, so Frank was quickly picked up by the police at the hotel because... Right. Here this man is. He just told her, like, the address he lived at. Like, I, I need this money. Um, he's immediately picked up um, and sentenced to prison to finish his sentence for the um, attempted kidnapping okay. and sexual assault that he had. He was picked up again. Um, before he was actually picked up, he was attempting to go on the run again, and he placed Sharon's son in social services, into foster care. So he ended up being placed with this really loving family. They absolutely adored him. Um, the problem, though, was everyone was really shocked when they found out Gregory was nonverbal. Um, he was nonverbal, and the only way he could communicate... What? Yes. He was nonverbal. He had um, shows of developmental um, delays and, um, you know, behavioral How issues. How old was he? I think he's six at this time. That's so sad. Yeah. Um, so he's nonverbal, and the only way he showed what he wanted was by either screaming or moaning. So Frank insists that Gregory is his biological child, so he ends up getting allowed visitation in prison to see him. So so sort of would take him for visits back and forth. Wow. Um, when Gregory started showing like hesitation about visiting Frank, like you know clearly saw that he yeah. didn't want to go, they did a DNA test, and it proved that Gregory was not his child. So visitation stopped. Was he mad? He was super mad. Um, and that did, it didn't stop there. In 1994, Frank is released. Four years. He only served four years. How does he keep getting released? He was released. He served four years for the, being escaped for all these years, on the run all these years, and wow. then for the attempted sexual assault. Yes. With that, with his history. He, was sent, he only had to serve four years. Um... So when he was released, he immediately started stalking Gregory and his foster family. Um, so eventually it led up to Frank showing up at Gregory's school demanding to see him. When they said no, he asked to talk to the principal. Um, when he got in front of the principal, he pulled out a gun and said, you're going to bring me Gregory. And they Dude. brought him Gregory. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Like, I'm scared. Let me just put this child in danger real quick. I know. I thought that, too. I was like, why Why would they produce him? That doesn't him? even make sense. Yeah, he just They're said, supposed to protect the children. I know. Like, they brought him. Brought him right to him. Wow. Um, and he threatened to shoot the principal. Um, so, to escape Gregory, um, to escape with Gregory, Frank took the principal and Gregory in the principal's truck. And they drove a few miles from the school. And Frank tied up the principal to a tree. And just left him there. He didn't harm him. Oh. And him and Gregory took off. So a search occurred. Um, they looked for two months for Gregory. And nothing. There was nothing to show where he was or where Frank was. Um, Frank was eventually arrested in Kentucky. Oh. He was found in Kentucky. and um, But Gregory wasn't with him. He insisted that, that Gregory was alive. And when questioned by police said, quote, it's none of your damn business, nor do I care 
how much any of you people in Oklahoma miss and love him. None of your, you have raised and have the bond of raising him. He is mine. Interesting. Is he still in Kentucky? He's in Kentucky. He's been arrested in Kentucky at this time. And he's saying that Gregory's alive. He just placed him somewhere. And that um, like he's, he's his father. And so it's none of your damn right. business where I put my son. Frank was put on trial for Gregory's kidnapping. Um, and it was only a few months after the kidnapping happened in 1995. Like, I mean, these things are happening very close together. Yeah. Um, during the trial, or during Gregory's trial, um, human remains were found in Florida. Oh my God, did he kill him? Hold on. They were not immediately identified, but it was clearly a homicide as the woman had been beaten to death and um, shot twice in the head. While all this is happening, all this is centered and focusing on 1995, a man purchased a truck from an auction and he found in the glove box an envelope. And in this envelope, it contained 97 pictures of a woman being beaten and bound. Frank had previously stolen that vehicle. Oh my gosh. And had abandoned it. It was confirmed that he had at one point had that vehicle in his possession. Yeah. The photos were compared to human remains. The ones, the ones that were found. And they identified the woman as Cheryl Comesco. He went back and killed Cheryl? He, they were identified as <laughs> Cheryl Comesco. I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing at the way you say Cheryl. <laughs> um, and they identified her because in one of the pictures, there was a wound to the cheek. And a skeleton head had a wound to that cheek. So they confirmed it was her. Through DNA. You know me later on DNA, but that's how yeah. they initially found it to be. Um, Frank was already incarcerated at this time. Um, and he had been sentenced to 52 years in prison for the disappearance of Gregory. Yeah. So they finally were like, okay, he's getting put away. Like, yeah. he's terrible. Thank like, God. finally, this final kidnapping is what we're going to get him on. Yeah. Crazy to me. Um, he should have got life. The first time he should have got yeah. life. Like, no question about it. Um so he was put on trial again, this time for Cheryl's murder. They felt like they had enough evidence to convict him at this point. Yeah. Um, he was found guilty, and he was sentenced to the death penalty. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So you would think case closed. Yeah. We're all done. We're not. Not even close. If you tell me he gets released again. Hold on. Not even close. I will smash my face through mm. this window. Hold on. So in the envelope that they found in the truck, um, other things were discovered. A young girl that looked to be four to five years old in age, there's pictures of her being bound and assaulted. Dave's photos were much older than Cheryl's photos. So these were like trophies he kept. Yeah. So police sought to, you know, identify the little girl and um, he would now be a grown adult. Yeah. It wouldn't be until 2014 that the little girl was identified. Um, in 2014, um, the case took, you know, a crazy turn, and they found out that Sharon was not Sharon at all. What? Sharon was an alias name. For? I'm getting there. Oh my gosh. So now we have to go back. Okay. Okay. To figure out who Sharon was, we have to go back. Okay. Um, so while Frank was on the run from his um, bond. During that time, we'd run, on run from his bond agreement. Yeah. Um, he ended up getting married to a woman named Sandy Chipman. Um, the woman had no idea who he was. Right. Or his criminal record. He was going under the name of Brandon Williams at that time. Um, you know, like Sharon, she had four children herself, and she had no idea of his sexual assault history, anything involved with him. Um, she wasn't exactly like a squeaky clean person either. She right. had some criminal history, but it was really petty things. Um, nothing violent, just petty financial crimes, basically. Right. Um, so they didn't have a happy marriage. They actually got married at a truck stop. Oh, you know I mean? romantic. I didn't even know that was a thing. You yeah. married a truck stop. <laughs> she got married at a truck stop. Um, 
and you know Frank was just terrible. Like so, I get it. He was just probably a bad husband. Yeah. Um. So, a little bit after they get married, um, Sandra is picked up on a bad check charge, and she's sentenced to thirty days in jail for this charge. Um. She leaves her children in the custody of Frank during that time. Terrible choice. It was terrible, terrible choice. I'm sure she regrets the decision. Um, when Sandra was released after her 30 days, she went home, um, assumed that Frank and the kids would be, you know, there. Everything was fine, waiting, um, and they were not. Frank and the kids were nowhere to be found. Um, and it took Sandy years to figure out what happened to them. What? Yes. Oh my gosh! Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. I would just. No. So when Sandy finally like attempted to locate them, um, you know, because she found out like two of her kids were living in a foster home, like he'd split all the kid- children up, so two of them were living in a foster Can home. You, could you imagine? No, I cannot. And the police told her that she um, had no rights to get them back. How? They said that Frank was the children's stepfather. And so he had every right to take them wherever he pleased. That's actually really strange. One, I feel like usually they side with the mother no matter yeah. what. And two, this is not even their biological father. Right. But the thing is, too, if you think about it, they don't know Brandon's history. So they think Frank, she's like this criminal. She's the criminal. He's the good he's, guy. Okay. Yes. I can see it from that point of view. Like, right. he's going to name Brandon Williams something popping up for him. Right. They search for him. So she found out two of her daughters were living in social services in a group home. Um, She still didn't know where her oldest daughter was or her son, Philip. So two kids are still missing. And so in 2014, um, Sharon Marshall was discovered to be Sandy's oldest daughter, Susan Severkis. He married his stepdaughter. Mm -hmm. Frank, Frank had taken Suzanne and raised her as his own. He then spent the next years re-clo- relocating and changing Suzanne's identity with alias names. For a while, she was like Tori. For a while, she went to multiple different schools. Um, you know, she never stayed too long in one place at the same time. So, you know, and Frank always said um, he never claimed. Well, he did claim that he was a biological child to some people, but the majority of the time, he put on like a hero act. Like her parents had died, and so he took the child in, or um, that Suzanne's parents we're were. We're talking about the woman that he married, right? Yes, we're talking about the woman he married. Her oldest daughter was Sharon. And he married Sharon. Yes. He married his stepchild. Yes. Under different aliases. Um. I did not see that coming. Yeah, that is it's not crazy. A part of the story I saw coming. Crazy, um, but he also put on a hero act. Like he saved her from like bad parents because they abandoned her. All kinds of different things, trying to look good about it. Frank kidnapped Sharon, assaulted her, later married her, possibly killed her, and then kidnapped her kid. So he's just generations doing the same thing yeah and the photos were just the older photos were discovered to be sharon the ones in the truck and the ambulance were sharing super twisted yep so he he did he assaulted her when all this evidence came to life in 2014 because you know she died yeah. way before this is over 10 years later i mean he's been in prison this entire time too yeah. they're still just un, like unwrapping this mystery so when all the evidence came out in 2014, Frank finally admitted that he had killed Gregory. That's so sad, dude. Yeah. He killed him the same day he abducted him. Why? I imagine he was too much to handle, probably. Yeah. Um, so, um, he did disclose um, where he had taken Frank, his body, um, but they never really found it. Um, they believe that um, the environment got to him animals got to him, whatever that might be. So it was gone. Frank was never convicted for Gregory's murder. Why? Because they never found the body? Never found the body. He was already in prison waiting on death row. Never convicted of him. But um, but the story continues. So 
in 2000, in 2020, okay, it's still going in 2020, Philip, Sandy's son, was finally found. He was a grown adult. Um, he identified himself as, as Philip and said that Frank had given him up for adoption, um, you know, shortly after his mother was incarcerated. They found him. Just... Yeah, in 2020, they found him. Like this wow. story is going over it's like still happening decades right and decades now. and decades coming out. So he's still on death row. He is still on death row to this day. He's been waiting 18 years to be sentenced to death. And he still doesn't have like an execution date? I don't think so. I didn't find one, but they, he might. I haven't found it though. Um, but yeah, even in 2020, they found wow, Philip, Sandy's son. He's probably like, um,. What is happening? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, to this day, Frank Floyd refuses to comment on Sharon's death. Absolutely refuses to. He won't talk about it. Um, and like I said, he's currently waiting on death row. He's still alive. Dude, that was super twisted. Yeah. Like, he abducts his own stepchildren, assaults them, marries <laughs> them, and then and yeah. then takes their children. Yeah. Frank's not a good dude. I told you to hold back the sympathy. He's not a good man. He still is wow. waiting to be killed, too. He's oh, old God. now, too. He's born in 1943. Like, he's old. Yeah. He's an old-ass grandpa. He is. And that's the story that of Frank Floyd. That just blew my mind. Yep. That just all the way blew my mind. Yeah, it's crazy, huh? <sighs> okay. They've actually made um, books about this story. It's called, um, one really famous one is called um, A Beautiful Child. That's a book, and they had a sequel following, like, who is Sharon? Because when the book was written, they didn't have any of this other information. Right. They didn't have all the stuff that came out in 2014. So it just keeps progressing. Maybe when, if they, like, find out more stuff, we can cover it. Yeah. Again, like, the new stuff. I mean, 2020, out. they found stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Frank might have a missing kid somewhere. That, you know what I mean? Like, we don't know. Yeah. This man was crazy and twisted. Wow. Yeah, that's a story. Yes, thank you for that. That was exciting. Okay, if you guys have any stories you want us to cover, if you have any, like, tales of your own, mm -hmm. send us an email, uh, murderwordspodcast at gmail.com. Yep. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram. You can listen to us basically on any platform, platform. now. <laughs> Um, which is super exciting. So let us know um, who you want us to cover. And we will see you. Not see you. Because we're not on camera. <laughs> yeah. We will talk to you next week. Uh, photos of Frank and this investigation will be posted on our Facebook as well. Yes. I'm sure he looks super creepy. He does, yes. <laughs> okay, bye.